Hello, everyone. We are live. Yeah. Hello, dear friend. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Um, welcome to our weekly uh, Meet the Artist live show series um, <laughs> with uh, our hosts, uh, Anna Bulkina, me, Anna Bulkina, Francesco Comito, Antonia Comito, and with yeah. our dear guest, yeah, Elettra Pomponio, Italian Hello. pianist. Hi, everyone. So, Thank hi. you. So happy yeah. to have you. Thank you so much yeah, for having me today. Yeah, we are very, very happy to have you today. Um, we know each other for uh, quite a long time now, and we are very glad that you finally could join our uh, weekly series. Yes, I am too. I am very honored to be here and have the chance to talk with you and to everyone that is watching us right now. So thank you for this. Great. Ciao, Fabio. So hello. Uh, while while we are waiting a little bit um, for other people to join us, uh, uh, you guys write in the comments uh, where are you joining us from. Mm -hmm. So we we know the our geography that is like keeps expanding more and more. <clears throat> and uh, meanwhile, I will introduce our guest to you guys. So Elettra uh, started to uh, uh, study piano at the age of four years old, so very, very early uh, in the, at the Suzuki School in Turin, in Torino, in, it, in Italy. Uh, then she went um, to um, Giuseppe Verdi Conservatory in Turin, and um, uh, she actually graduated with a master's degree from SMU, um, Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas. So she's quite uh, <laughs> she's quite experienced pianist, and she's playing concerts all over the world, uh, back in Europe, here in US. So Elettra, welcome. We're Thank really you. really happy to have you. Uh, you. Antonia, would you like to ask the first question to Elettra? Yes, of course. Uh, I know that Elettra is a wonderful musician. Is a wonderful artist. But what I really, really, really appreciate so much about Elettra is that she is an incredible critical thinker. She is an incredible free spirit. Can you share your experience about uh, uh, your learning journey, your uh, starting point in classical music, uh, how you developed your uh, your path as an artist, uh, as a human being. Uh, tell us more about your experience. Yes, absolutely. So as Anna said, I started playing piano as most of the pianists as well, um, that I was very young. And mm -hmm. since, I mean, it wasn't at the beginning, of course, it wasn't my decision because when you're four, you have no idea what you're doing, you know? So <laughs> I always had my parents next to me and like working together with me. And so I, I owe them a lot for this. And as I was growing up, like I, it, it just felt natural to, you know, keep going um, in, into our, this path. And um, there are there were like specific moments where I really felt that this was what I wanted to do. And this was like, wow. uh, for instance, like mm, one year when I was in high school, I spent uh, one year in Scotland and i gave like a mini recital it was just 30 minutes music but i was i was i was 17 and most of the people over there that were taking music classes weren't as experienced as i was so it made quite an experiment an impression and i remember receiving a letter from the director of the school mm -hmm. and there were like few words that really struck me and they were like and he, he yeah. wrote a very nice letter say like how much he loved it and everything yeah, cool. and, and then he concludes the letter saying i i felt i felt great all afternoon so like okay. the feed that what he really was telling me is that like i was so the, the my music was so powerful to just you know, make him feel good and like influence his emotions and like the way he was feeling. So that was really like a great, great, great experience that I had there. And so like, for example, one one of the answer I give when people ask me, why do you, why are you a pianist? Mm -hmm. What do you decide to do? 
to be a pianist, that's like the, the answer that I give. It's because it's so powerful. You have such a you know powerful tool in your hands that exactly. it's yeah you know, what you can do with it. So this basically, what he so said cool. that uh, that he, your music moved him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, like he 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 like he he. He felt it was so good for him that like he just felt good about it, and he had this feeling of like, good. yeah, mm -hmm. it's really, it was really nice. It was really, really nice. Yes. Really, That's something incredible. that uh, really is so meaningful because you know, if we realize the power that music mm -hmm. has on our, you know, our soul, uh, how yeah. that kind of impact that can have uh, on our emotional environment our emotional background Absolutely. it's really something impressive Absolutely. and having this kind of power in your hand that you can leverage this power this music this tool these yeah uh, you imagine weapons. like what, what yeah. you can do like it's yeah. it's insane if you think about it it's really yeah. unbelievable yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very, and, uh, tell us very, more yeah. about your journey your artistical journey mm -hmm. if you have any uh memorable uh, experience that uh, uh, is uh, really uh, stuck in your mind. Uh, tell us more. Well, for sure, one of the things that like, happened to me that I will cherish forever and I will like never forget, it's uh, probably the first time that I played with an orchestra. Wow. And I played, uh, I played Rhapsody in Blues uh, by Gershwin. Wow. And it was just, it was just like magical and, you know, playing together with so many people and being completely uh, inside oh, wow. the sound and the music and feeling that like all like other 50 people are like feeling exactly the same thing that you're yeah. feeling while you're playing and you feel the energy that it's coming from the audience because, you know, there is always this a little bit of yeah energy and thing that like it's going on over there and you feel you perceive it as like they perceive your music when you play so it was it was incredible i remember like when i when i finished playing i almost like had tears in my eyes because Whoa, the emotion yeah. was so so strong that like it was it was incredible so for sure that was like one of the milestone in my in my career my so no, I think is the right term because yeah. I think the first experience with an orchestra for a uh, performer, mm -hmm. a pianist, a violinist, uh, I don't know, whatever, it's really something so unique, so yeah. memorable. It's something that you will carry during all your life. For me, also, it was an amazing experience because you feel this kind of huge massive energy that all the collective all the orchestra i mean uh, is producing during the performance is something yep. really vibrant is something alive you know absolutely absolutely yeah. yes yeah yeah but, but elektra i know also you like sport uh, a lot you know i just do i do you i do like a... sport Everybody. yes I I do love sport. When I was growing up, I never really like I wasn't really too much into it. But then there was a moment when I was around 18, 19 that I I started swimming. I learned how to swim when I was like when I was in elementary school, when I was a kid. And then I stopped for many, many, many years. And then I started again when I was 19. And it's just, it's just probably I like I like it because it's just so similar to what my to what like musicians do. If you think about professional uh, athletes, they do exactly what professional musicians do. They practice every day. They go to the pool like every day, like at six in the morning, and they practice and they go there and they have their routine they have all those things that you need to think about the technique and what to improve what not to improve like so all these all these sort of things so the sim the similarity between the two things like made me uh try to uh, bring those two paths like uh all together and there was a moment actually uh a couple of years ago uh during uh during it was like during COVID uh that i was home i was just you know the strangely enough like the pool was open because it was like the later phase of the of COVID. so <laughs> the pool was open and i would you know 
practice a little bit and then and then go swimming and then I was like like why can I try to put the two things together and why is there a way that uh, music and sport can like live exactly in the same moment so mm -hmm. I did some research and I found out that the many people have been doing like experiments uh, and they they show these experiments showed that you know if you listen to music while doing sports that will bring you an incredible amount of benefits like for your health for your body for your mental health um, and it's very interesting because they they really went into details to like what kind of music to listen when to listen how much like how loud how fast the music has to be how slow like so for example if you are training for for speed in the in the in the pool then you will have to listen to a certain kind of music they will have a certain rhythm will have a certain tempo while if you are listening to uh, music while you are doing the warm up or you're doing the cool down that you would listen to completely different kind of music and it's just unbelievable how the music has such an effect on your brain while you're doing sports. Yeah. So for example, as if you're training really hard, like in a high intensity uh, kind of workout and you listen to music, to a specific kind of music, then you will realize that actually you feel less, um, you feel less um, fatigue. Yeah, compared exactly. To, yeah. Compared to when you do sports and you don't listen to music, why? Exactly. Because your brain is going to work. It's not just focusing on on the on the effort that you're making with your body and with your muscles, but um, your brain is going to work like another direction, which is like listen to the music, right? And and this has even like more effects when. Um, when, for example, you apply music to sports in a synchronized way, yeah. so mm. you are mm. exactly together with the with the rhythm that you are listening yeah. to music. So that's like the the best way that you can. Now, use this music. is now impressive. I, sorry, sorry. No, sorry no, no I said that. No, I just said that now it looks like a, you know a contemporary dance rather than sport and the music together so because they are moving together with the music and their moves are so energetic that it almost looks like they're working out mm -hmm. yeah for exactly sure. i also read an article about uh, this topic that you mentioned Eletra. is mm -hmm. uh, when is that when you are practicing endurance activity mm -hmm. uh, Music can help you increase your performance because it uh, allows you to get in the alpha state. Your brain mm -hmm. is producing uh, alpha waves. Uh, yes, it, uh, yes, yes, yes. You said uh, yeah. you are focusing on a different element that is not the main activity. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, because it also like influence your like your humor, so your 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 being, like the world you're feeling. So it improves it. So you're feeling you're feeling good about what you're doing, and that way you don't just think about you know the, the effort and the fatigue can you suggest a playlist um can you suggest a playlist for us uh, <laughs> well that's actually a very very interesting question because of course music is like absolutely completely personal and subjective right so the playlist that would work for me maybe like it won't work for you you know, mm -hmm. so what you would have to do is just, you know, send me a list of all the things that you listen to. And then I will go and like, I would try to like put together playlists for you. Wow, this yeah. is amazing. Yeah, for that's sure. Good, that's, that's for sure, for sure. Actually, if, like everyone idea. is listening, if you, we, if you ever we want to try and a business with it. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can do business with this idea, absolutely. <laughs> I now now I see gold here in my in my eye. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can do one. Up. <laughs> if, anyway, you have, Alexa, if you need Antonia, a playlist, just a ask second, me. Antonia. Just a second. <laughs> can I ask you one thing, Alexa? What is the the thing that con that connects music and uh, um, sport? Me personally, I will uh, use only one word. Which one? That is uh, perseverance. Oh, perseverance. For sure. So, sure. what do you think about? I know, for example, you know, many people they have kids, you know, 
and they would say, I want my child to uh, play piano. I want my child But to, for fun. To, to do some sport. I want just to, just to have fun, uh, nothing serious. Mm -hmm. The thing, and after I would like to know your experience, uh, what you think about... Uh, Actually, you said before that when you uh, you swim, you have to go. If you want to swim properly, I mean, you have to go to the to the uh, swimming pool. Uh, there is the routine, warm up, uh, repeating the same thing, the, the same movement over and over again. And also, sometimes it it it's, it is very boring. I mean, the difference between a professional and uh, an amateur or somebody that just talk is the ability to do for more time boring things. Um, to some of my students, I say this, that, for example, piano is like uh, the most beautiful and popular girl of school. And you want to talk with her, but she doesn't talk with you for years. So if you give up perseverance if you give up she will never talk with you so you don't have to give up you have to constantly constantly try to talk with her finally one day the music the piano whatever will talk with you you know i kind of li like you let's go to have uh, some to, to drink some coffee or to eat some pizza in some somewhere mm -hmm. so playing the piano and doing sport uh, trains your perseverance And if you don't have a very strong and trained perseverance, when you will want to make your real dreams come true, you will fail because you don't have a trained perseverance. So Absolutely. that's why you should do sport and music, not just to have fun, but do it. Professionally, learn so what do you what think right, about this? Uh, yeah, this I mean, I, I absolutely agree. And um, I mean, we all know that you know, if you if you stay on the piano five minutes a day and and then you don't look at it for the next five minutes a week, <laughs> month, <or some> <laughs> and, like, of course, there is nothing that is gonna come out of it, but you have to, to be Zero there, and, but like you know, also like <laughs> learning to do that when you're a kid, you know, and learning to be on the piano like a little bit, but like every day and or like going the pool like a little bit but every day that like will not just help you like in having like results like when playing or when swimming but it also will help you like in life you know when when you will have your you know when you will grow up and you will do your own things like being super like focused on what you do and being very um being very sure about like that you want to reach like that goal like you will know that to reach that goal you will have to do a little bit like every single day because otherwise like there is no way that you're gonna win it right Yeah, so absolutely. absolutely they will help you like they will help you know kids and also like more grown-up people like if they don't have this kind of like perseverance like they for sure let's take for example you want to be a lawyer one day i mean i'm talking yeah. to to you parents uh, and to <laughs> to kids if you want to be a lawyer one day You have to go to university, right? You have to study so many subjects. Or, for example, you want to be a doctor. And you like uh, uh, cardiology. You know, you, you, you like uh, to study the heart. But you don't like brain, for example. You don't like the brain. Uh, for, I don't know for what kind of reason. But in order to become a doctor, you have to study books big like this about the brain. Otherwise, you will never be a doctor. So if you are not trained to do boring things, uh, you will uh, fail. That's, that's it. So we have here a question from our dear Alex. In what ways do you hope to explore and push the boundaries of music and sport fusion in your own work? Wow. Oh, that's very that's very interesting. Okay, so um, I'm still like kind of like of the at the beginning of all this like this. I mean, it's a word for me, you know, the combining these two aspects. So, what I really would like to achieve is really find a way to um, kind of like work like with both uh, both environments, you know, and on one way, uh, like in the sport, and I mean. In, with the music, I would like, 
yeah to help you know people like doesn't have to be from, like athletes but like any any kind of like person that like likes that likes to work out you know in um getting better in their workout and uh like uh having like seeing like improvements and at the same time you know there are so many people that like haven't listened to like classical music maybe in, in their whole life you know or like they don't like it they don't leave they know of the its existence but they don't listen to it you know so through like this combination it would be possible to uh try to get people closer to you know classical music and discover it and and fall in love with it you know just by listening mm -hmm. to it so these are kind of like the two two goals that like I would like to achieve. Do you something. know if uh, there are there are if there are any studies about uh, how classical music can affect the physical performance? Because there are a lot of studies well, that yeah, there are a lot yeah, there are a lot of studies, uh, but they just talk about like music in general or mm -hmm. like kind of like pop music or you know rap music, very like with very strong and repetitive beats mm -hmm. that's like also like an important aspect that the music has mm -hmm. to have like mm -hmm. if applied to sport it has to the rhythm needs to be very repetitive is it time mm -hmm. to, yeah. right and like in the classical music this doesn't happen because i mean it happens but like it's not that common because there you know there are all these waves that we experience like mm -hmm. when you have Accelerando, you know, and decelerando, all these things. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really have that uh, that steadiness, you know. Mm -hmm, yeah. But like nothing will, nothing can prevent you to, you know, just select the, mm -hmm. the segment of music that you need, and then apply that you know, segment to a specific part of the training. You know, I was suggesting to our personal trainer to uh, do his workout with kettlebell. Uh -huh. Listening to Barber Sadaggio. Uh huh. He there said it was amazing. Uh, he felt, you know, this kind of trance. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. was uh, doing kettlebell for half an hour without stop. Uh, really. What Did about Stravinsky? Yeah. What, there about, are... what about Stravinsky for cardio? <laughs> that would be very upbeat cardio. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm pretty sure that we can find uh, a specific study on this topic because, uh, you know, there are so many studies about how, for example, Mozart uh, can improve your cognitive mm -hmm. function. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. yeah. The thing is that, like, I have been mostly focused on, um, on studies that involves uh, swimming and since like mp3 like waterproof mp3 are like a recently like mm. they've discovered quite like recently they've been created quite recently there isn't like as much as there is like as much like experiments and things that there is as like with any other sports so i've been focusing mostly on the on the swimming side but of course it can be applied to like anything and any maybe sport. it can be a case study sure. you can create yeah, your own for sure. study. Why not? yeah yeah why not why not yeah but that's a great Elena, idea. just a second uh, a question how can you listen to the music uh, if you are swimming do uh, does uh, exist any kind of uh uh, headphone that i mean yeah. uh, it's possible to use it in a in a swimming pool yeah 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 they invented like waterproof headphones you just waterproof like you, you use yeah you use them as like any regular headphones but you use in the water it, wow. does it work i mean uh, yeah, yeah. Does, have you ever tried it do you have it to works. plug it in, in in your ears yeah yeah you, or you plug it in your in, in your ears and like there is all, all sorts. There are, there are the ones that, like, they're connected one year to the other one, or they are the, like, you know, uh, like any AirPods, like, just in, that you just put in your ear. And, and mm. yeah. Just a second. I found them uh, in uh, just uh, in, uh, in Amazon. Let me share the link here with our friends. I didn't know about these things. I think uh, I will uh, definitely buy one of them. Uh, Actually, yeah. I have a very small swimming pool here. <laughs> <laughs> very yeah. small. I don't know if it's going to be... <laughs> you can give it a go. You can give it a go. The will go up. Today is a little chilly for swimming. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So... Uh, oh, hello, Anthony. Ciao, How Anthony. Are How are you? Hi. 
<laughs> so Richard, we have uh, these um, um, headphones that are uh, waterproof, but guys, I want to ask uh, to our dear friends, uh, why don't we create, for example, a, a Le Salon de la Musique event tra training uh, in classical music? Uh, so, for example, a Zoom, uh, we, we, we talk with uh, Roberto, Antonia, and we do why not? Uh, this training, uh, for one for cardio, for a, a heart attack cardio. <laughs> the, <laughs> Who's going to be a model? You? Uh, you? No, definitely no. I cannot do uh, <laughs> heart attack cardio with Stravinsky. Definitely, I, I can't. But something more calm, definitely, is, uh, is something Francesco good. can do many push-ups. Listen, while well, scuba diving. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> Cool. No, I never, I never did scuba diving either. So no, never. <laughs> Me Are you Francesco? No, no, definitely. No, you Antonia? No, definitely not. Yeah, we have to try. It's it's a little bit different, especially when you're going too yeah, much. Yeah, like too, too down, much. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, definitely. it's it's the pressure that is go, yeah. like applies on your yeah. ears. Yeah. Like, I don't think but, it, I don't think they like it's like it's healthy to do that. I think it would like. But, no, no, no. If you go too much down, yeah, oh, yeah, much yeah. yeah, yeah. For example, those, um, you know, uh, those people. Oh, hello, Anu. Hi, Anu. How are you? If you if you want to participate, we we are planning to have this uh, Zoom uh, training in classical music. If you, if you like the she idea, can, right? Uh, she can be the model for sure. She Join, can be the model. Join our like. Tra training day on Zoom at the La Salon de la Musique. <laughs> yeah, I agree personally. Let's do it's it. A huh? It's a great idea. I agree personally. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Uh, I believe that Roberto will uh, will agree to without yeah, any problem. Sure. Ah, okay, we have uh, we have uh, um, a sound we have up. like four people. Anu will be fifth. Hey guys, join us. Tony, uh, what about you? Tony, yeah. <laughs> That's why I thought you needed the water. Uh, huh? <laughs> no, he, that's why he said, that's why I thought you need a... Hello. Uh, oh, the waterproof headphones. Uh, this is the that's okay. why I thought you needed the waterproof headphones. Ah, no, no, no. Yeah. You know what we can do, Tony? We while they are doing some sport, uh, I mean, with the, the training session, we, we can, can do spaghetti, spaghetti, <laughs> and uh, we can cook some barbecue uh, or barbecue yes. training. Okay, we can do the <laughs> boss, yeah, exactly. boss kind, uh, kind of uh, you know, boss events one for uh, for uh, hitting, another one for running. That's we can do a challenge. I'll get you some other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We can do the world record for who is eating more spaghetti sonata. <laughs> and perseverance is the key. <laughs> but not but in eating. Sorry, can we can we talk uh, maybe a little bit about uh, how to uh handle uh, stressful situation because sport teach us so much about this for example i was thinking about you know uh, is uh, isometric exercise like plank mm -hmm. you know you are dying and you have to stay there yes don't give up yes this absolutely. is really a strong teacher yeah you know? yeah, yeah yeah absolutely and uh actually like in in those studies that i read they of course, like athletes, like be right before, like doing their racing and, and competition and and everything, like they, they get super nervous and stressed and like you know anxious, and it's in, if you, um, if, I don't know if you ever saw like swimming competition. Sometimes, like when the athletes go to the pool, you see them like with like earpods in the in with earpods yeah. listening to music, right? Because if you listen to a specific kind of music, the music has the power to like calm your nerve down and to calm <laughs> your heart, right? Yeah. So that you can like you know handle a little bit more the stress and, and the yeah, anxiety. And anxiety. And, yeah, and I mean also sports itself, like it's a very good um, tool to 
uh, to handle the the stress and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but what about the fear? I mean, stress fear. Is one thing. Well, fear, fear is like I think fear, fear is, is completely stuff. yes. Fear is completely. Um, I think it's a completely different thing than than stress. You know, the fear, the fear. You kind of you need to at some points you will have to face it. You know, you have to face the fear mm-hmm. if you want to <laughs> overcome it. You know, and if you want to pass over it, you know. And like, I'm gonna confess something. Like when they asked me to talk today, I was like, they know. Like my reaction was, no, 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 I don't want to talk. I don't want to do it. Do it. <laughs> Because like I'm very like I'm a very introvert person. It's like talking with people, and like it's like it's always well, it's hard for me to handle it. And but then it was like, you know what? Like you have to do it because like you can't yeah. just you know shut up for the rest of your life and not talk to people and don't say what you what you want to say. So um, amazing. Yeah. Just so a second, is- guys. Uh, do you think that she, actually she's saying the truth? She's talking. She doesn't look afraid at all. I mean, well, she's yeah, lying. That's it's not true. <laughs> that's the entire facade that you have. You know, even when you play, you're scared to death. But like you still like, <laughs> just <laughs> like, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you see, here we have Alex and say it's hard to believe that you are an introvert. In fact, it's not I know, lying. You know, <laughs> I am. I, I really am. I really am. Uh, but anyway, yes, you. I was saying that there is a point, like in, in your daily life, it can be like you know a small fear. It can be a small. Oh, I it's not true. Yeah. I know. I said it's not true. We have the truth here. The truth is coming up. <laughs> That's not true. Too like, many people know, know you. Too, too people, many people, people don't, don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, anyway, so we, we are. You say that sooner or later you have to face the fear, but the yeah. problem, there is a very big problem. You know, I talk uh, every day with musicians from all over the world, and all of them they share the same the same feeling, fear. They are, yeah. they are, I'd say, infested with fear. I'd say it's like kind of they Stuffed. have, uh, they, they have, um, they are hundreds a kind of virus. The, the fear, fear of what? Fear, the fear for of... the future. Yeah, because fear the for fear... the future. They don't know what to do because uh, yeah, they go exactly. out from it's the it's university. Like when... Yeah, exactly. Like when you experience fear, you experience fear where like you don't know what you are going to work to. You don't know what you, what to expect. You don't know what you will find. That's why you're scared because, like, you're going to wear something that you don't know, right? So the mm-hmm. the fear, is, yeah. Let's one second. Let's stop specifically on this. What is fear? Fear is uh, you. Your brain is producing a stress reaction mm-hmm. to a future projection. Mm-hmm. This is fear. It's just yes. a projection. Yes. Or what what's coming next? Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So Anu suggested that you know people people fear from failing. So they they uh, fear uh, the future failure. Yeah, they don't even know yeah, if they will true. fail or not, but they already fear it. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's true. True. In a way, in a way, like if you if you fear from failing, like you're already like kind of sabotaging yourself. Yeah. You know, because you're already That's thinking so like I, I, I won't make it. Because like yeah. if you start thinking that like you can make it, like you know, you will never make it, right? Or no, so, or you yeah. ask yourself, what if I will not make it? Yeah, But, it's it's the same thing. Like yeah. the, the doubt, the doubt is still there, right? Yeah. And the mm-hmm. moment the doubt is there, it means that like you're not hundred percent convinced or like what your next steps are gonna be and like if your next steps are gonna be successful or not and the only way to find out is like to do it right because there is no yeah. there is no other way and even like even if it happens that you fail like you will have to you know to learn from that failing and then like keep going and you know and try a second time and then maybe you will try a third time and a fourth time until like you'll be able to you know To, to do it, to do what but you what other do. might you think if I don't do it? What other might think if, like, if you know, 
you I, I know that it's hard and it's easy to say that like you have to not care about um about what other people what other people like you know uh, think about you and what you're doing but if you stop to think about like, what every single person is thinking about you like you will never i mean what can but, you do but who can guarantee that uh, that what you say is uh, is uh, it's correct what 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 can guarantee that i will have success the only the that? only thing that like will guarantee that is that you try That that's the, the only thing. No, just a second. The only thing that I guarantee you, if you don't do anything, uh, that's also a choice. If you don't do anything, you know, this uh, is yeah, for sure. Yeah. Scientific you will pay. If you are, if you want to expect different results, you cannot do the same stuff. This is a certain thing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, Letra, when you say. You see, the problem with the educational system is that they, uh, in schools, we've been taught uh, to fear the mistake. If you do a mistake, mm -hmm. you're an idiot. If you uh, cooperate, you are a liar, you, you, you are cheating. If you um, uh, take a bad grade, uh, for example, if you do something bad, you will have a bad grade, etc., uh, etc. Et they don't teach you to welcome the mistake. Mm -hmm. And so... Doing mistakes actually is the only way to learn. They want, uh, teaching you in school, uh, to do certain things, to be part of a mechanism, to be part of uh, uh, a society built on a rat race. That's the, the, real, the truth. Can you tell us, uh, Aletra, how you face the fear? What actually, because I know you a long time. And uh, I know the, the path that you are, uh, uh, where you are going, that is, is the same, you know, like like uh, like us. But before we had also the same problem. We we were afraid. We we understood there was a problem, but we didn't know how to solve it. And after, mm -hmm. we were so, some kind of stuck in uh, a, a limbo. Do you know what I mean? The limbo of um, uh, Dante Alighieri, you know. Uh, so what do you think about yeah i mean uh well for sure like the fear will always be there and that's like mm -hmm. no matter what there will always be fear and um uh what would i want oh i don't i forgot what i wanted to say um to uh, very very yeah. emotional i know no i i just remember one story about two wolves that there are always oh, two wolves yes that one is fear one is power and which one will win the one It's that fine. you feed the most yeah exactly the, the one that you feed the yeah. most like uh, the one that you feed the most to who oh, you, okay. you you give more food uh-huh You yeah. see, yeah. like if you will uh, keep that uh, fear wolf to to suffer out of hunger, it will be too weak to you know to to attack you. Yeah. While if you will always give him food, then uh, he will be strong enough. But yeah, like you know, you know, there is always like an inner voice in your head that is telling you, "Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it!" And like, yeah. it's up to you to like how much you want to listen to that like little voice, or like to how much you want to listen to the other voice who's telling you, "Do it! Try! Do it!" You know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's totally up to you, and uh, it's up to you. And then, like, you know, you will succeed if you have like you know correct people. Uh, around you people that like have the same view as as you do and that like will help you know help each, to help each other because you want to go in the same direction right so you can make it alone right so um but yeah i don't think you can make it alone like it's way easier if you have like people around you that like have different uh skills that you have right and through the combination of like all these skills then like there is no way that you can't you can make it right what if you have toxic people around you well, toxic toxic people, people, like, it's not gonna you... work uh, uh, they say it's not gonna work uh, think about something uh, <laughs> better to something do else. Yeah. something else those are toxic people i mean you need just people they believe in you say come on do it do it do it yeah yeah for sure because like i mean yeah <laughs> You have you need to have around you people that like share your your vision and and exactly. your thoughts and and everything. But what happened to you personally? Did you read some book particularly Sorry? that? 
what, what happened to you personally? Did you read some book that made you start questioning things? Uh, or did or... you meet somebody? Or did you meet somebody? <laughs> this is a question. For sure, for sure I met somebody. <laughs> <laughs> for sure like i met all of you and then like changed change that changed a lot for sure so like i owe you a lot yes um and yeah like you know like you have to get there and like try to get information on how to get around the problems and yes i did uh, yes i did read <laughs> some books <laughs> and how you know important I, yeah, no, there's in reading is like it's one of the things that I, I like to do most in my life, and like I love reading, and you know. I know. We always warm. talk with Electra every day. What 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 book did what you did read you today? Read today? <laughs> we are eaters uh, of books. We eat for breakfast books every time. We listen yeah. to audiobook, and after we talk, this is very important, guys. Write yeah. in in the comment what book are you reading now? If you don't yeah. read, come on, your brain will will die. So, yeah. and actually, can I talk about like one one book in uh, particular that I really liked, and it's like the book about selling, and ah, which one? Uh, the one by Grant Cardone, Sell or Be Sold. Sell, Sell or Be Sold. Sold. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's I great. really, 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 really recommend all of you to read it because yeah. it's unbelievable how I think we all. And like musician as well, like you know, and um, we all underestimate the power of like selling, which yeah. is something that like we do every day as, without like unconsciously, right? But if you can get ahead of it, and if you can like master the skills of like learning how to sell, it can be selling a project, it can be selling an idea, it can be selling like yourself as a musician, it can be like selling whatever then like there is nothing that you can achieve because if you understand how to sell to the correct people and how to look for the correct people that are, are looking for what you are selling then like it's done i mean <laughs> and handling objection and we handling were talking about fear one of yes. the biggest fear of musicians you know what is fear for uh, of rejection, for rejection. Mm -hmm. fear yes. of the rejection and yes. if you know how to handle mm -hmm objections uh, why are you afraid nobody can say you know no, I mean, exactly. you know exactly. what to do it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something like playing chess you don't have to think you just need to read what other masters did in that particular tournament with that particular move in that particular situation yeah. so and, educate and, yourself read. and also what you have to do like to in order to like master these skills guess what you have to do you have to practice it, you know, oh, every yeah. day. I love it and persist it, on it until, exactly. like, you, have you it know, like, yeah, until you have it in your hands. Exactly. What I really love about Grand Cardone's book is, guys, this man gives me so much power. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, I really feel the power that commitment can have, you know. Yes. You have to commit to solve uh, yourself. The rule you are talking, right? What you are talking about the 10x rule, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, come on, uh, he's uh, talking about commitment in all his books, uh, but, but especially in the 10x rule. 10x rule is uh, commitment. Uh, you have to be sold 100 percent on your product, uh, on your idea, on yourself, and you know. You are not doing enough. No. Just if you think that you are doing I... enough, it's not enough. Now I you am think going to share the book. person in the room, you are not in the right room. Ja, I'm going to share the book with you guys. Don't worry. So you don't have to go. The next rule. Uh, no, seller be sold first. Uh, seller be sold. So, the second. And uh, um, I think that sell or be sold is a 10x rule uh, on steroids. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, just a second. Why doesn't work? I uh, know it's is it please uh, I uh, write in the comment if you see the link because here it's no uh, only on Antonia's uh, channel. Channel okay, let's uh, let's see if I can find here the 10x uh, um, rule 10x rule 10x rule. <laughs> 
So guys, uh, and also you can find all these things, uh, all these books uh, for free. I mean, uh, you go you, you, for $10, uh, you take uh, Audible uh, or whatever, and you have all the audio books uh, for you in your hand uh, and you can fulfill your brain instead of bullshit, you know, you, you read in, uh, uh, come on, just a second. Let me find when, ah, uh, during the day when you are listening to podcasts, to podcasts, I mean, or ebooks, uh, which mm -hmm. is your routine? Uh, so I usually like kind of like read in the morning, and then I when I do listen to audiobooks when I'm doing something else. So, for instance, uh -huh. either like I'm cooking or like I'm driving, uh -huh. and you know, like just to don't waste the time, you know, and just. Yeah. Taking, well, making, writing the morning. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I could only listen uh, books in the car when I drive. Ah, oh, that's a very good strategy. Yeah, yeah. But I would like to have more possibilities to also read at home. Uh huh. Yeah. Wake up in the morning. Oh, like listen. I always, I always, I always struggle. Me does. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to recommend one thing, say something to our friends. Uh, when uh, Anna says, uh, I would like to find more time. No, Maybe. I would like to find more possibilities. Possibilities, okay. Does, does, I'm not uh, saying something bad about you. Just a second, let me talk. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that we should start, uh, as a musician, to consider the, uh, the reading as part of our job. It's like, for example, uh, social media uh, is not just, you know, for, uh, to, have, to have fun, talk with people, is part of the job uh, of uh, a musician. Does it make sense? It's like, for example, uh, I don't know if you know who is uh, Warren Buffett or uh, Mark Cuban. They read every day for hours. Why they read every day? ROI, not return on investment, but return on the information. Nowadays, if you don't know things before others, uh, and you, if you don't know good information, uh, you will lose your, uh, your battle in life. So reading must be part of your job. It's part of being a musician. It's not just... Uh, uh, re I mean, uh, not just reading about music, but reading how to give your product to the customer. Does it make Absolutely. sense? Otherwise, you will complain that life is shit and uh, nobody wants to, to listen to your music. Uh, oh my God, life is unfair. Uh, the um, universities, uh, the governments, Piove Governo Ladro, how they say in Italy, <laughs> that is <laughs> framing. <laughs> <laughs> so, ciao Rashid, how are you? Hello, uh, oh, so many friends. Hello, Rashid. How are you? Hi, guys, Rashid. if you have any questions, uh, by the way, write us uh, in um, the uh, comments section. Message to me, to Elettra, to Antonia, uh, oh, to man. Anna. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, actually, I wanted to say one thing that you were like mentioning right now, and the power of like social media. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I always, always, always saw social media as like kind of like a negative things because I never knew how to use it. You know, mm. I always only saw the side of like being used by it. So just, yeah. you know, scrolling all these like image, stupid like images. Exactly. Or, like yeah. Dopamine machine, you know. Yes. But mm -hmm. if you use, if you use it, you know, for, for your outcomes, then like it's a total different thing. Yeah, so, it's absolutely. life changer, guys. It's life changer. I yes. will repeat. It's like it. you it's have a knife. You you can look at it as a weapon, uh, as a dangerous thing that can you know even kill somebody. But you also can do many useful things with a knife, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's up to you, uh, and you have to master your abilities to use that instrument that can become whatever uh, you want. Uh, you know, uh, it to become. If Cut you... a nice brisket, for example. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is always thinking about food. Yeah. Uh, see, it's true what you say, and absolutely. Like, uh, for example, uh, a gun. A gun is something dangerous. Uh, if if you if the gun is like this, no. Yeah. If you have the gun like this, is a different thing. Like social media. Social media are very toxic, especially how they are 
uh, say, um, yes, uh, how they are um, the, the project that there is behind social media. But if you are not used by social media and you use social media for good things, uh, to promote your good music, uh, to promote your products, uh, to build a <laughs> network, uh, to, to, to reach to po uh, potential customers, uh, to prospects, to friends, etc. It's a fantastic tool, but I don't have time. That's the same problem that we were talking before. You don't have time because you don't consider social media and reading part of your job. So... You know, Google task or any app uh, for your daily tasks. You will change your life. But I'm so curious, Electra, really. Can you talk us uh, more about your, your journey? How you uh, switch your perception from, you know, a uh, uh, negative uh, approach to social media and now you are considering also to leverage this technology yeah. to promote yourself or, you know, to explore the potentials that this uh, wonderful tool can yeah, have. Absolutely. So let's say this, when, when I finished my master, when I, like, you know, left school, I went out of school, then I was like, okay, and now <laughs> what's, what's going to happen now? Like, well, what should I do? What can I do? Like, you know, I was teaching for a little bit and like, that was fine. But, you know, that's not what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like, you know, um, and so like the thing is like, how do you how do you reach out to people? And like the easiest way is this, you know, like Internet and Facebook. Like, yeah, I don't know if I can say, but like social media in general, like uh, they allow you to like be seen. No, but you'll be seen by like so many people that you can't see, but they can see you. And you know that like, you know that they will see you in the moment, like you feel the support from them, right? So, um, you know, when I met Francesco and Anna and they were talking me about, they were telling me about, you know, Les Salons de la Musique. And I was, I looked at it, I was like, wow, oh my God, yeah, that's, that's, that's incredible. Cause they, 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 they reached so many people and like, and been like working on it like every single day and you too Antonio I'm sure but like I didn't know you at the time <laughs> but um, you know so like and and then like you open your eyes and you see that like how many other people are doing the same thing and like they're they're doing what they want to do because they found a way to do it so yeah that's why I, I'm kind of like and it's like it's 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 been a very 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 recent switch you know and like yesterday mm -hmm. I like this like literally you know you know and, what i realized that uh, uh but in the past uh, talent can uh, could express itself uh, just uh, in specific channels through specific channels today we we are lucky to be in this amazing era because today nobody can stop talent you can mm -hmm. express directly without any middleman uh, you can express yourself freely mm -hmm. As yeah, we, just a second, a small uh, parenthesis a small thing uh, only if you talk about certain things uh, they are okay with the big boss uh, zuckerberg etc no, no, no. or other things now anyway there are instruments like with, with the no no, no i'm talking about the uh, 3.0 you know, uh, just a second. Uh, let's, uh, in, fa in fact, uh, let's be uh, l l specific because uh, uh, that's why now we want to go in the centralized, uh, decentralized, decentralized uh, channels. Uh, channels. Because uh, even if you are an artist and you want to express uh, freely, that's not true because there is always, you know, the um, uh, third party the, platform that can. Yeah, by the way, things. by okay. the way, let's use this opportunity since you, you mentioned it. I, I mean, in our team, I am uh, the person who is responsible to send claims uh, to all the, you know, copyright boats that are sending us their, like, um, how you call it, disputes, right? So, um, can I share with you guys the amount of companies that are sending us their claims? Absolutely. It's illegitimately. More... Illegitimately. Exactly. 
So, for example, we we yeah. uh, like the first year the salon existed. We used to held the the festival. It called the online piano festival, and we uh, did it because there was COVID. So we uh, thought that it's a good opportunity for you know pianists who stay who lost many concerts and you know the, were thinking you know to get some. Uh, revenue from uh, from those like the um, how you call it honorarium from those concerts and it was their living so they were left without that income so we thought okay we will just you know help to as many people as we can and we were holding like one uh, concert per week uh, by uh, one, of, of one of those artists yeah so for, then we would put the, the these recordings again and again on the salon because there were like many people who joined us recently so they never had a chance uh to listen uh, to listen to these uh, concerts so these recordings were recorded exclusively for Le salon de la musique so we have Oh, we own all the rights to, you know, to post this music. What happens is like over 60 companies, six, six zero, three. 60, yes, sending us their claims daily, on daily basis. For sometimes I have to send like 50 claims for one recording, like I am sending them back and they, they block uh, that recording for one week and then they say okay yeah we agree with your dis like with your claim and so we 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 withdraw our you know uh, our block but there is always like almost always one or sony or belief right just a second, manager just a second let's say again the uh, the the names so we have sony to what do we have more Oh, I can read the yes, Universal read. Music Group. And, and then, okay. No, no, wait, 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 guys. Okay, let's let's uh, don't, don't let's not be uh, just. Okay, I'll just read them one after another. Okay, those that are always there, those big ones, that Warner, uh, Net, um, uh, what is this? Um, I wanted to say Netflix, not Netflix, Naxos, Naxos. Okay. So, so let's uh, say Warner. So let's go. Uh, so absolute label services, right? Manager, A V E X. Those are uh, J Japanese. Beat Rising, uh, Believe, right? Manager. Those are giants. B M G, right? Manager. Those are from. Um, they, they also have many offices like uh, uh, worldwide. BMG Digital Service, Cadiz Digital, Capital CMG Digital Rights, CD Baby Ride Manager, CMRRA Ride Manager, Crimson Technology Incorporation Rights Manager for Music, Consulate Co Limited Rights Manager for Music, Dance All Day, Music uh, Word Tribes. Those are Germans, I think. Uh, in fact, they have in Wachendorf. In Germany, they, they're like head office. Dash Go Rights Manager, Boom. Distro Kid Rights Manager, Downtown Music, E Musica is yeah. there from Poland, Entertainment One Rights Manager for Music, Fuga, F U G A, Aggregation Rights Music. And those are always there. Fluxus, uh, Giro Stream, Idol Distribution, Independent Right, uh, Inner Cat Music Group, Ericom US uh, Limited, Coda Culture. Those are from um, from uh, Denmark. Contour New Media, L, L A N D R Rights Manager, Memo Media. Then they have, you know, Mint. So these Mint, they are recent ones. They have their uh, representative in different countries. So what they do, they have one office, but then different representative in different countries. One in Slovenia, one in, uh, mm. in Norway, one in America, one in somewhere else. So what they do, they send you separate claims from each country. Yeah. And then each of these companies in different countries that belong to one head company they are deducting revenue from the video this is but, stealing but you know but what, what is stealing. let's what you know what, what, yeah, they yeah, are what, stealing 
this is totally illegitimate. They are and stealing. Facebook, uh, come si dice complice? Facebook uh, allows this. 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 Allows this. It's permitting this and is equally guilty in this. In this is stealing. They are stealing money from creator, and we are talking about millions of dollars from all creators. And you know what they say? We are too big to to fail. Too big we to are fail. Too big to fail we are too big so now go and sue us take a lawyer you poor creator we will you do play it. Your, you, Don't you, worry. your small sonatina in your house uh, your piano your your whatever you want go and sue me hire a lawyer and this lawyer has to find you in japan to find uh, the other yeah, companies because you see, in uh, there are like Germany. many 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 of them and you know the most funniest thing like you know it's not funny but uh, I find it very ironically funny that, you know, Facebook informs us that these companies generously allow us to take 20% of the revenue for oh, the videos that belong revenue. to us, yeah, of our revenue, and they take 80 you see? Facebook uh, yeah. is uh, equally so, guilty. Yeah, let me let me give, uh, continue. So, Multizia Group uh, um, LLC, Music Video Distributors, Stop. Naxos of America, Stop. Nippon Columbia, One uh, one uh, RPM, Right Manager, PIA, so P-I-A-A-S, Digital, Rugby Incorporation, Rebeat Right, Repost new, uh, Network, uh, SoundCloud Direct, uh, Rossiter Road, um, uh, then uh, S-O-C-A-N Data Rights Manager, Sony Music Entertainment. So with Sony, we have a special relationship because they <laughs> are the most, uh, you know, the, the most cases that, you know, when you, you send a claim after one week or sometimes after one month or sometimes, we, we, you know, after half a year, we don't know. Yeah. Some videos, after they destroyed the yeah, reach of the yeah. video. Sometimes we are still waiting, like we would send it in the summer and we are still uh, like uh, in review so these companies you know held the right to say okay we are reviewing your video in order to see whether you are or you you are you know stealing revenue from us or whether this video or the music in this video belongs to us anyways so what is the procedure in the, on facebook you send the claim and they have seven days uh more more or less to review it usually you know, they never answer like next day or they always wait seven days. Okay. On the seventh day, they say, okay, we withdraw the claims, except one. Sony says, I refuse your claim. So you have to send another claim and, you know, explain much more thoroughly why you think this is your video, not their video. And then in most cases, Sony would accept it, but waiting for another week, which like you can forget about your video. Nobody already saw it because it was blocked for two weeks. So you have to republish it. Once you republish it, guess what happens? They are claiming it again like the first day. So basically, if they decided this video will not, you know, be going to reach an audience, it will never reach the audience. But okay. Who is the biggest uh, uh, responsible? Who is the main responsible? Is Facebook because the algorithm sucks. The algorithm is terrible. The algorithm. But let, uh, let's doesn't... explain why the yeah. algorithm doesn't work. Because yeah. all the music of our artists are in the public domain repertoire, but the yeah. algorithm recognizes this music as a recording of artist X with the company, the label Z, for example. But this is not actually, this actually is not true. Then exactly. they are blocking our video and they illegitimately, they are cutting our revenue. Yeah, and but the, there are also companies come si stanno speculando they are uh, speculating they are speculating on this thing so they they do oh, okay the algorithm uh, uh, is uh, garbage so what we do we try to make some more extra money yeah let, let me the, explain yeah. you the scheme okay let me explain you because since i was like really into it i was trying to understand the whole picture so what i discovered so i started to search pages of these you know right manager agencies that were claiming our videos and i found like even websites 
And so I found that it's a very big corporations of, uh, you know, they, they are pr even music producers. So what they do, they have a, like a little niche, little fraction in their company that is has something to do with the rights management. Okay, so what they do, they offer to musicians, okay, you pay us and we will protect your rights in the social media. So what they really want that we artists will go to them and, you know, ask for the protection from the, you know, dangers that they created. You, you see, know, uh, you, you know, let's call stuff with the right name. This is mafia. This is mafia. mafia. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. This you know, is, yeah, really, yeah. You know, you know what I believe? Uh, you know what they will do? Uh, this is my 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 personal opinion. Uh, we will, um, I hope I I, um, uh, I hope this is not going to happen. But I believe that they will do this. First of all, they create the problem, and after they will ask. Now we will solve the problem for you if you pay us. So a if you don't want solution. a premium solution. So if you don't want uh, your video being <laughs> blocked by the, the algorithm or by our company, let's buy this software. For example, if you register your brand we'll on this thing or pay a an annual fee, so we will protect you. We will protect you. This is uh, exactly what you said. That's mafia. That's mafia. And, and then so, sometimes we wonder why there are some pages that, you know, constantly, uh, you know, constantly post uh, videos that are not protected, uh, you know, are not the public domain. They're like recordings from uh, Medici TV or stuff like that. And they're never blocked. Their videos are always there, like no blocking audio, no blocking video, and they're never blocking the, the page. What's going on? And then now they we think... think well, maybe they, they, they are paying to these uh, big companies for, uh, you know, for the protection. And so that's how it works. Anyway, so, uh, guys, we, yeah, if you... Yeah, the logic, we will move faster. And exactly. what we will do, we will uh, share awareness. Awareness and, guys, today we have the solution to solve this problem. There are decentralized platforms platforms that allows you to express yourself freely absolutely but the, 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 the problem is that uh, if you uh, still remain in practicing your sonata at home and you don't question things uh, and you say always oh my god but i'm so small uh, what can i do alone uh, uh, you don't and pay just attention complaining. To just complaining, just complaining. Saying, exactly. ah, they are blocking my video if Man, they're blocking your videos, stuff. write us a yeah. message. Write us a message. Let's work together to put an end to this thing. But if you Guys, always complain... We do, yeah. we do an hashtag campaign. Use this hashtag campaign. The hashtag is my performance, my right. Let's create a campaign in which we are creating a video of ourselves telling our experience under the hashtag my performance my right let's write in the comment section okay who is writing my performance so that's absolutely my crazy right. i play for example my beethoven sonata i played the uh, 100 uh, opus 110 by beethoven they say this is their property i send a claim and no that's mine they say no i refuse your claim and no fuck off that's what they say basically so absolutely crazy absolutely crazy and they say you cannot send another claim after then, and what okay. happened and what happened later if you receive so many claims for example from all these comp companies yeah. and you don't reply on them like on time what, what can they happen can demonetize your page facebook can demonetize your page or or, or actually can uh, cancel delete your page uh, maybe you were working on it for 10 years for 15 years or whatever and after boom you disappear because they decide that you don't have to exist for i don't know then for guys if you had this kind of experience if you experienced these uh, copyright strikes create a video under the hashtag my performance my right let's learn, launch this uh, 
uh, campaign. Absolutely. And let's see what happens. Yeah. Absolutely. Then. Yeah. Okay, guys. So uh, we are we are re uh, running out of time a little bit, but we were, were, were very very glad to to you know come to this, uh, You're right. <laughs> this uh, uh, you know topic today. It was like outburst of uh, uh, emotions because it's really really something that uh, people uh, people are dealing with right now. Uh, right here on the Facebook or even on Instagram, they started this on Instagram. Those big ones, the mm -hmm. Universal, Warner and Sony, they started claiming video on, on Instagram as well. So beware, yeah. the rest of 60 companies that I, uh, I was just reading through, they're like, they will not uh, hesitate to join the group, you know. Uh, one second, one second, Antonia. Please, Antonia, I want to reply to that important yeah. one second guys who is online now share this live stream share this live stream under the hashtag my performance my right do it uh, for me share okay this live stream. Antonia, i want to answer uh, to rachid first of all uh, yeah. <laughs> um how to say antonia la, la lira del giusto come si dice in italiano when uh, yeah. uh, 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 uh Desire, let's say in Latin. Yes, no, when I want to say that um, when a person knows that he's right and he's actually mad because of uh, some some something that uh, uh, that is uh, for some something that is not uh, just to say uh, for some injustice. Yes, that's very dangerous. Not those they they are doing bad things and by the way i have a family of lawyers so i don't even have yeah. to pay them. so yeah. be careful <laughs> anyway so we can have thank fun you all very much huh? we can have fun you know with uh, exactly i don't have, i don't <laughs> even have to pay lawyers so guys uh, i'm talking Why? to sony and um, your friend <laughs> Sonia, your friend. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. So uh, now we are going to come to a conclusion of this stream. Thank you very much for all of you to uh, for being with us today. Uh, thank you, Electra, for coming. Thank you. We, thank you. Enjoy you. Enjoy you. we hope you will come back. No, we all for sure. We will. <laughs> Yes, we will have an extra again. <laughs> and uh, before we close, a word from our sponsor.